Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Udafan Walbajo and I am from the Department of BS Chemistry and my ID is 007. So today from the course of Organic Chemistry, the topic on which I am going to have my presentation is named reactions. Uh, this uh, this, in, uh, this includes uh, the first one is the Fry's rearrangement, the second one is the Rosenman reduction, the third one is the Stephen reaction, fourth one is Pomeranz Fritz reaction, and uh, the last one or the fifth one is the Pictet Spengler tetrahydroisoquinoline synthesis. So we will discuss their uh, introduction, their overall reaction mechanism, and their synthetic applications one by one. So, first of all, uh, moving towards the First uh, uh, named reaction that is the Fry's rearrangement reaction. So, the Fry's rearrangement reaction was uh, reported by K. Fry's and his co-workers in nineteen uh, in nineteen hundred. So this uh, was also known as Fry's Frink rearrangement. So the definition of the Fry's rearrangement is that the conversion of phenolic esters to the corresponding ortho or para substituted phenolic ketones and aldehydes in the presence of Lewis or Brunstad acid is called the Fry's rearrangement. So usually the, uh, uh, the explanation includes the uh, reaction conditions uh, their general uh, uh, general uh, information and uh, the effect of the changing uh, reaction condition. So the reaction uh, reaction usually takes place at temperature that range between 80 to 180 degrees Celsius and the Lewis acid used in this reaction are hydrofluoric acid, perchloric acid, and polyphosphoric acids. The uh, yields are highest when there are uh, electron donating substitutions on the phenol, while electron withdrawing substitutions result in very low yields or, uh, or no reaction. At high temperatures without any solvent, the orthosylated product dominates, while low temperatures favor the formation of paraacylated products. So, the, uh, uh, so this one is the overall reaction of the Fry's rearrangement in which a phenolic ester reacts with, uh, with the Lewis or Bronsted acid or the solid acid. Uh, and we have orthosylated phenol and paraacylated para phenol as a product. So the moving toward the reaction mechanism. In the first step, phenolic ester attacks the aluminum chloride and a complex is formed uh, here. After the fragmentation or carbon oxygen bond breakage uh, here, we have an uh, aluminum phenolate ion and a cilium ion. So there are next, there are two possibilities at low temperature and at high temperature. At high temperature, the, uh, the benzene ring or the phenolic ring attacks on the cilium, a cilium ion, a cilium carbon at this position. And we have an ortho, uh, ortho substituted phenol and uh, the, at low temperature the acetylium ion is attacked by the benzene or phenolic ring at para position so we have an uh, uh, para uh, substituted phenol at the uh, at low temperature so this is the reaction mechanism of the fries rearrangement so moving toward the synthetic applications in the production of the uh, niflon uh, in the production of the knife loan, the anthrocyanin intermediate was first deprotected with titanium, uh, titanium tetrachloride and then acylated with acetic anhydride in the presence of titanium uh, tetrachloride. So a spontaneous Fry's rearrangement took place uh, uh, to afford the ortho-acylated product uh, like here. So the acyl group is attached uh, to this position and the, uh, this includes the synthetic applications in the formation of the knife loan. So the next reaction is the Rosenman reduction. Carl William Rosenman first reported this reaction in 1918, and thus the reaction was named after him as Rosenman reduction reaction. So the definition of the Rosenman reaction, uh, reduction reaction is that it is the transformation of an acyl chloride into corresponding aldehyde by the hydrogenation in a toluene solution over barium sulfate spotted palladium. Therefore, it is generally known as the Rosenman reduction and the other names also as Rosenman hydrogenation or Rosenman hydrogenolysis and etc. 
So this one is the overall reaction of the resentment reduction in which an acyl chloride is uh, hydrogenated in the presence of palladium that is uh, coated with barium uh, sulfate and we have a corresponding aldehyde. So uh, this reaction is normally carried out by bubbling hydrogen gas through a, a rigorously dry solvent, uh, uh, five to 10% palladium catalyst in suspension. The yield of aldehyde critically depends on the resistance of the aldehyde towards further reduction. So the aldehyde is uh, resistant, uh, uh, make resistant from the further reduction. So for this purpose, we use, uh, add, we use or add catalyst that act as poisons, modifiers, or regulators like sodium acetate, nitrogenous bases, quinoline, uh, uh, et cetera. So the, the presence of poison or regulators, that is the chemistry behind the um, poisoning, is that it, it believed to block the act sites which, uh, with the most catalytic activity and prevent undesired reaction. So the next one is the mechanism of uh, this reaction is that the, first of all, the palladium, uh, the, the two palladium atoms attack the hydrogen molecule and a ligand is formed, uh, palladium, uh, hydrogen, palladium hydride ligand is formed. So the, in the next step, the acyl chloride is attacked by the palladium uh, that is oxidative addition takes place uh, like this. And the, uh, the next step is the ligand exchange reaction in which the chloride is replaced by the hydrogen atom, one of the hydrogen uh, atom attached to the palladium. So we have a ligand exchange reaction. So uh, uh, the next step is the reductive uh, elimination that is the hydrogen is that, uh, attached to the carbonyl carbon and the palladium that act as a catalyst is uh, re, uh, removed uh, or we can uh, recover the catalyst in this reaction. So we have an aldehyde corresponding aldehyde for, for the starting acyl chloride. So this one is the reaction mechanism. So the next uh, reaction is the Stephen reaction. So each introduction is that um, this uh, reaction was reported by A. Stephen in 1925 when uh, he treated uh, or added aliphatic nitriles to a solution of tennis chloride in diethyl ether saturated with an hydrous hydrogen chloride gas. Imine color, uh, hydrochlorides were obtained that under uh, when hydrolysis give aldehydes uh, in good yield. So the definition of this reaction is that the preparations, uh, preparation of aldehydes by the reduction of nitriles with the combination of stannous halide uh, or hydrochloric acid in an organic solvent is known as the Stephen aldehyde synthesis or Stephen reduction. So this one is the overall reaction in which a nitrile compound is treated with the stannous chloride in the presence of hydrochloric acid or ethyl acetate, it and then uh, uh, underwater uh, or the underwater hydrolysis takes place, and we have a corresponding aldehyde. So the more general mechanism is that when an aliphatic or aromatic uh, nitrile compound is attacked by the hydrochloric acid in the solvent at 25 degrees Celsius, then we have an amide oil, amide oil chloride formation. In the next step, the amide oil chloride is attacked by the stannous chloride uh, in the solvent. Then we have aldimine hexachlorostanin, which upon hydrolysis, underwater hydrolysis, uh, gives the aliphatic or aromatic high, uh, aldehydes. So moving towards uh, the explanation of the reaction. So the original procedure has been modified. First, the nitrile is dissolved in an inert solvent, and the resulting solution is saturated with anhydrous hydrochloric acid gas uh, uh, at zero degrees Celsius. Then a solution of stannous halide or HCl in the, in the same solution is added. Aliphatic nitriles tend to give lower yields primarily due to the formation of trimeric side products. Yields are also strongly influenced by steric factors or ortho substituted aromatic nitriles rarely give high yield of the corresponding aldehyde. If a large excess of stannous halide is used, aromatic nitro groups also undergo reduction to yield the corresponding aromatic amines. 
So moving towards the mechanism of this reaction, so this reaction consists of three steps. The first step is the formation of the amide oil chloride intermediate. The second step is the reduction of the amide oil chloride to the aldehyde, And the third step is the hydrolysis of the aldehyde to the corresponding aldehyde with water. So in the first step, the nitrile, uh, the nitrile compound uh, acts as a nucleophile and attacks the hydrogen of the hydrochloric acid and we have uh, amide oil chloride formation and we have amide oil chloride formation following these steps in the next step the reduction of the amide oil chloride uh, to aldehyde takes place the uh, the amide oil chloride uh, attacked uh, is the dissolved in the stannous chloride solution and after uh, addition of HCl solution, we have an aldehyde hydro uh, aldehyde hydrochloride. So the uh, last step the, is the addition of water or the hydrolysis at temp high temperature. So at a uh, high at a high temperature, addition of water to the aldehyde chloride gives uh, aldehyde. So this one is a mechanism of the uh, of this reaction. You know that moving towards the synthetic applications of this reaction, the stereoselective cyanation of one one prime by naphthalenyl two two diiido was developed by M. Patola and co-workers using zinc cyanide and catalytic amounts of palladium. So that uh, the resulting dinitrile was converted to corresponding one one prime by naphthalenyl two two dicarba aldehyde in high yields using Stefan reduction. So this compound was prepared by the Ampetola and his co-workers using zinc cyanide and catalytic amounts of palladium. And after that, the dinitrile compound is converted into the aldehyde uh, aldehyde groups using uh, the Stefan reduction reaction. So the next reaction is the pomeranz fritsch reaction. This reaction was reported by Pomeranz, C. Pomeranz and P. Fritsch in 1893. When they, when they prepared diethyl amines, when they prepared isoquinoline uh, from the benzyl, benzyl amino acetals, uh, in the concentrated sulfuric acid. So the definition of the, uh, this reaction is that the acid catalyzed cyclization of benzyl amino acetals uh, to give substituted isoquinolines is known as the permanent fritsch reaction. So this, uh, this uh, reaction is uh, basically the cyclization of benzyl amino acetals to form the isoquinolines. So this one is the overall reaction of the uh, pomeranz fritsch reaction, which includes benzyl amine, uh, benzyl aldehyde that reacts with that to dye ethoxy ethyl amine at high temperature, that is 100 degrees Celsius, to form benzyl amine, uh, benzyl, benzyl um, amino acetal. So upon hydro concentrated hydro uh, sulfuric acid addition. At, uh, in the presence of ethyl alcohol, isoquinoline is formed. So the benzyl amino acetals are prepared by reacting to to dialkyl oxyethyl amines with substituted aromatic aldehydes or rarely with aromatic ketones. Aromatic aldehyde give rise to C1 unsubstituted isoquinolines, usually in good yield, while aromatic ketones afford C1 substituted isoquinolines in low yield. The highest yields are obtained with the substitutes on the aromatic ring that are attached to the aromatic ring as electron donating. Strong electron withdrawing substitutes on the aromatic ring prevent the formation of isoquinolines. Unless the aromatic ring is highly electron rich, heating of the reaction mixture is required in order to achieve cyclization. So, moving towards the mechanism, in the first stage, benzaldehyde attacks the benzaldehyde attacks the di to to di alkyl amine alkoxy ethyl amine and benzyl acetal. And ben benzyl benzyl acetal benzyl amino acetal is formed by the condensation uh, and hydrogen uh, proton transfer. 
After the condensation, hydrogen atom is added to one of the alkoxy groups. Subsequently, an alcohol is removed here at this position. And then after, uh, uh, after the transfer of hydrogen and the second alcohol removal, we will have the formation of the isoquinoline. And the, uh, in the last step, a second alcohol is removed and the bicyclic system becomes aromatic. So the next one is the synthetic application of the chromium switch reaction. Uh, the, uh, the synthesis of pepperine uh, was achieved starting from racemic still being oxide and using a modified chromium switch reaction. So the amino acids of the still being oxide led to the formation of cyclization precursor, which upon treatment with excess benzyl, benzyl chloride underwent cyclization to give n benzoyl to give n benzoyl one two dihydroxy isoquinoline derivatives reduction under wolf kishner conditions for pepper pepperine so this uh, uh, pepper pepperine uh, this, uh, involves the synthetic application of pomidon's fridge reaction at last we will study the pictet Spengler tetrahydroisoquinoline synthesis. So this reaction was, was first reported by A. Pictet and P. Spengler in 1911 when they formed one, two, three, four tetrahydroisoquinoline uh, from the condensation of phenyl ethylamine and diethoxy methane. So the definition of the reaction is that the condensation of B beta Aryl ethyl amine with a carbonyl compound in the presence of a protic or Lewis acid to give rise to a substituted tetrahydroisoquinoline is known as the Pictet Spangler tetrahydroisoquinoline synthesis or the Pictet Spangler reaction. So, this one is the overall reaction uh, that, uh, that includes the phenyl ethyl amine uh, that undergo a reaction uh, with the Only beta aryl ethylamines with electron donating substituents afford high yield. The carbonyl compound can be a aldehyde or ketone or an acid lipyl surrogate. The number of electrons donating groups on the aromatic ring influences the ease of the reaction. The reaction is usually carried out with a, a slightly excess of the carbonyl compound uh, in either protic or aprotic medium. So moving towards the mechanism of the reaction, uh, first of all, phenyl ethyl amine attacks the carbonyl co compound, and we have a, a, a complex uh, that in which the nitrogen gets positive charge. And after the removal of hydrogen, then we have will have the this compound. And uh, in that, the oxygen uses its lone pair and uh, gets a proton. And after the removal of water, uh, uh, we have a compound like this. Again, when nitrogen uh, gives its lone pair to the, car the carbon here, it again gets a positive charge here. And then after, again, the removal of the second hydrogen of the nitrogen, we will have a, a compound like this one. And after the shift uh, base formation, the, there is the formation of the tetrahydroisoquinoline. Uh, the tetrahydroisoquinoline is synthesized. So moving towards the synthetic application, so the, one of the key steps during the inertia selective total synthesis of mountain type alkaloid cocaine, uh, cocaine is the pictet Spengler reaction. The substrate was exposed to aqueous solution of formaldehyde in methanol in the presence of six normal HCl uh, or hydrochloric acid. The cyclization took place overnight at reflux temperature that is the 80 degrees Celsius to afford the pentacyclic product in a uh, moderate yield. It, it is worth noting that under cyclization condition, the benzyl, benzyl protecting group was removed. So this uh, is, uh, picture Spangler reaction is used in the formation of cocaine. So this is all from my side. Thank you.